Okay, I've changed this program up just a little bit. I made my camera much smaller. To be perfectly correct, uh, my camera would have to be a pinhole, an infinitesimally small dot on the screen, but I like having this miniature camera there. And then I have our box out here again. I'm going to take our viewpoint and just move it down if I can so, and align it with the plane as best I can. Okay, maybe that's all. We're below the plane. Probably right about there. And I want to talk more about what these perspective projection matrices actually do. Let me draw some lines. Uh, I guess we'll stick with red. Why not? And here's the camera. Sitting here at the camera, the camera has that view frustum. Again, go Google view frustum. Go look at the pictures they have in there. But basically, there's this view frustum or this scene of view that the camera is interested in. And let me draw the down part as best as I can in my rather poor art skills. And we use this view frustum to do our perspective projection. Now, what do I mean by perspective projection? I was riding on the train this morning. and I was happened to be riding at the back. I turned around, looked at, out to the back of the train. And I saw these train tracks, and they were converging to a vanishing point. That's kind of terrible train tracks, but if you can imagine train tracks. The further away they got, got from my eye, the closer they, they became. Now, I know physically that's not possible or else my train ride would get really interesting very quickly. The train tracks are definitely parallel, but as objects get further away, there's this foreshortening effect or the fact that the object is further away from my eye, it is smaller than things that are closer to my eye. And let me tell you how that works. If you look out the window, for example, where I live here in Utah, we have these mountains. And I know the mountains are huge. I've hiked a few of them. And let's just say that's a good day's journey to hike a mountain and come back down. The mountains are huge. But where I live, I can look out my window and look at the mountains. And if I put my fingernail in front of my eye, then it looks like my fingernail is larger than the mountains. Well, I know that's not true. It just happens to be that my fingernail is much closer to my eye than the mountains are. Let me explain why that works. My fingernail, when it's in front of my eye, it takes up a lot more surface area of what my eye can see than the mountains. The mountains are further away. Let's look at the example we have here with the box. Here's our eye. Here's the front of the box. The front of the box is right in front of the eye, and it's taking up a huge amount of surface area of what the eye can see. You see there's a little gap here and a little gap here, but the front of the box is just hogging all the surface area. But as the view goes out, let me actually continue this off and up and higher and higher. I can't do the bottom of the screen because obviously that's off the recording. But if you get, get the idea, let's look at the back of the box now. The back of the box is not taking up nearly the amount of surface area that the front of the box is. The front of the box, there's very little gap right here and very little gap right here. But the back of the box, look at all this gap. Let me do a different color. All this gap right here. The back of the box is not able to take up as much surface area as the front of the box. Same idea. My fingernail is hogging up everything that my my camera sees or my eye sees, whereas the mountains are further away and they just can't take up that much surface area as far as what my eyes see. Now, when we take this three-dimensional scene and convert it to that two-dimensional smash, however, we leave the depth for the depth test, we essentially have to fake that. Okay, going from this camera view to perspective view where we do the perspective projection and smush the box, the front of the box essentially has to get bigger than the back of the box. And watch what happens. I'm going to grab the slider. You're familiar with the slider. It will do our smush. I went back and changed the code so we got the negative Z flipped around again. But hopefully you understand that from the last video. I put the demo back to how I, how I originally had it. Watch as I tell this box to squish. Notice the front of the box. What's happening to the front of the box? The front of the box is getting larger. If I could draw a straight line. The front of the box is getting larger. The back of the box is getting smaller. All right, let's let me erase these and let's continue with the smushing. Get that off the screen. Let's keep going. Oh, I just moved the camera. Okay, smush some more. Front's getting bigger because it's hogging up all that view in front of our eye. The back's getting smaller. Back's getting smaller. And there we go. So this is projected space. 
All right, let me erase that and move our viewpoint over to the right a little bit. This is projected space. Okay, we've seen that. And what happened was before we had our view frustum doing this sort of thing where it went out like that. But then once we do the perspective projection, essentially our view goes like this. Okay, it goes perfectly parallel. And in order for it to do that parallelism, if you can imagine me taking this part of the view and rotating it that way so that it's down like this. Same thing here. I'm going to rotate that one like that. Well, now our view frustum, we have these parallel lines. And when we did those rotations, what happened is we brought the back of the box in back of the box in, the front of the box went out and expanded. So that's essentially what a perspective projection is doing. Again, if you want to understand all the details of the gnarly math, go look at the game engine programming playlist. But for everything we need to know, for, at least for our graphics playlist, just understand that a perspective projection widens up things that are closer to the camera and smushes things that are further behind and thus it causes that foreshortening effect when we actually render this as a two-dimensional image from the viewpoint of the camera. Let me move our actual viewpoint over here and then ah look at that the front of the box is just huge as far as what we can see with our camera.